Welcome to Fluid Mechanics N6. Today's presentation is going to be on water turbines. Before we begin, I do need to say that you will need to have a decent understanding of trigonometry for you to be able to tackle this module. If when I say to you, for instance, that in a right angle triangle, the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, if when I say that it does not ring a bell, then I will advise you to pause the video here and go and revise your maths course before you continue. Otherwise, this module will seem to be more difficult than it really is. Having said that, let's begin. First, we will look at the two types of water turbines that we have. The first one is the reaction turbine. The working principle of a reaction turbine is simply that in order to generate power, uh, there is a combined action of pressure and flow of water. So as the water is flowing through the turbine's blades, it will cause a change in pressure, which in turn will create a reaction force and it is that reaction force that will spin the rotor. And as the rotor is spinning, uh, of course, then uh, you can transform that mechanical energy into electricity by means of a generator. And so what is important to understand is that a reaction tur a turbine usually is fully submerged in the fluid. Say if it is water that we are using, then the wheel of the turbine will be operating from within the water. Okay, so it is fully submerged. And so two common types of reaction turbines that we have is uh, the Francis turbine and also the Kaplan turbine. But for the purpose of your fluid mechanics N6 course, the turbine that we're going to focus on in this module is the Francis turbine. And this is a picture of it here. And as you can see, this is uh, the place through which the water will be coming in. And as the water comes in through this pipe, it will come and meet this wheel and it will interact with the veins here. And of course, it will cause this to spin. And if you have a shaft that is connected to it, then of course the shaft will begin to have kinetic energy. And it's that kinetic energy that can then be transformed into electricity by means of a generator. What is important to see here is that though the water is coming in radially, okay, it will be discharged actually. Okay, that is very important to see. And so you also have guide veins. The guide veins are pretty much fixed. They are used to guide the water uh, so that it will come and interact here with the runner veins. Okay, now the runner veins are not static. Okay, they do move and rotate. And it is the water that causes that rotation. And so uh reaction turbines are used for applications of uh, el generating electricity mainly and so that is why you will find them with hydroelectric plants uh, and usually in places where you have a lower head but a very high flow rate and the second type of water turbines we're going to talk about is the impulse turbine now with the impulse turbine basically uh, it's the kinetic energy of the water that is being converted into mechanical energy. And then again, you can convert that mechanical energy into electricity by means of a generator. So you basically have water that is coming uh, and it is directed towards the turbine. And when it comes and it hits the buckets of the turbine, it will cause a rotation. And then that rotation is then... Uh, producing mechanical energy, which can then be converted into electrical energy. Okay, so uh, now when it comes to an impulse turbine, this one is not submerged in water. Okay, it is not submerged in water. It, it is pretty much operating in the air. It is the water jet that comes and strikes the blades of the turbine. 
okay so that is one big difference that you have between the reaction turbine and the impulse turbine usually they will ask you to give one or two differences uh, in your exam so one big difference is that the reaction turbine is operating fully submerged in water whereas the impulse turbine is not sub submerged in water it is operating in the air it is the water that comes the jet of water that comes and that strikes the blades of the turbine so the most common impulse turbine that we will speak about but not in this module in another module is the pelton wheel and this is what a pelton wheel looks like and as you can see this is a bucket and so you will usually have a jet of water that is coming from a nozzle somewhere that will come and strike the bucket and when it strikes the bucket the back the the wheel here will begin to rotate and this is mechanical energy that can then be converted also to electricity and so with impulse turbines uh, they are used more conveniently in places where you have a high head but a low flow rate okay so this is another distinction between the reaction turbine and the impulse turbine for the reaction turbine you needed a lower head but a high flow rate whereas for the impulse turbine you need a high head but a low flow rate so uh, these are the sort of things that you will need to remember in your exam because they sometimes ask you to distinguish between a reaction turbine and an impulse turbine tell the differences okay so not too difficult you can just remember from my explanations some of the things that you can tell them okay so let us carry on now we will look at the francis turbine velocity diagram okay and so it looks like this and so as you can see what you have here is the runner vein okay the runner vein the runner vein is here so it is moving in a clockwise direction and it is going like that that is the runner vein it's moving like this because of the influence of water upon it so this runner vein here is moving in this direction okay and of course the bottom radius we will use small r this is the distance between the center of rotation and this point here of the runner vein and the big radius of course will be capital r and this is the distance between the center of rotation and the top tip of the runner vein okay this is the bottom tip this is the top tip of the runner vein okay you need to remember that sometimes they will give you the diameters in your question and uh, if it's the diameter uh, when measured from the top tips then of course this will be uh, from the top tip sorry then this will be capital R okay that that diameter will help you to get capital R but if it's the small diameter that is measured from the lower tip then of course that is the diameter that you can use to get small r and so with this uh, velocity diagram we have two triangles first the inlet triangle which is the triangle on top here and I am soon going to label it for you these are the labels that you have on the inlet triangle and this is what everything represents okay so ui that you see here this distance from here to here is the tangential velocity of the runner r that you see is this here is the external radius of the runner as i explained the distance from the center to the top tip of the runner okay so the external radius of the runner is r capital r and then we have vai of course we will use the subscript the subscript i for the inlet and so vai here that you see is the absolute uh, velocity of the water at the inlet and then you have vi which is the velocity of flow and vi is this and if you look you can see that this is the radial component of VAI okay if you uh, just take this and you try and find its component on the vertical you get VI so VI is the radial component of VAI and we also refer to that as the velocity of flow VRI that you see here is the relative velocity of the water 
relative to the runner blade okay or the runner vein the relative velocity of the water to the runner vein that's vri and then vwi which is this distance from here to there okay vwi it's the velocity of wheel or the tangential component of vai okay its tangential component is vwi but it's also referred to as the velocity of wheel and then you also have the angles theta i that angle here is the guide vane angle and then you have the the other angle here beta i which will be the inlet runner vane angle now what is important for you to understand is that with a velocity diagram what we do is to express velocities in terms of length in a triangle you will remember with power machines n6 and n5 also you did draw velocity diagrams and what you were doing was relating lengths inside of a triangle to velocities by means of a scale okay and so this is uh, the type of exercise you did in power machines n6 However, here in fluid mechanics N6, you will not be required to draw the velocity diagram, but they will give you the data of these uh, in these triangles. And then it's going to be up to you to then find the data that is missing. They will not ask you to draw these triangles. They may just give you VI and maybe UI and then maybe beta I. And then it's going to be up to you to find everything that remains in the triangle. Okay, if they want it. Sometimes they may just ask one or two things from the triangle. And so you will use the data that you already have in the triangle for you to determine the rest of the data. And as you can see, uh, you're going to need to understand relationships between angles and sides inside of triangles okay so this is very very uh, important okay so just bear in mind you're not gonna be requested to draw the velocity diagram but rather to find the data missing in the diagram and so the second triangle that you have here is the outlet triangle and these are the labels appropriate to this triangle and as you can see we are using the subscript o to say outlet okay and so this is what everything is again u o now is the tangential velocity of the runner but on the outlet triangle small r is the internal radius of the runner or the distance between the center of rotation and the lower tip of the runner vein v a o is the absolute velocity of the water but because it's subscript o it's at the exit not the inlet VO is the velocity of flow or the radial component of VAO. Okay, VRO is the velocity of water relative to the runner. VWO is the velocity of wheel or the tangential component of VAO. This is VAO. If you look at its tangential component, that's VWO. Its radial component will be VO. Okay, uh, see here where VAO is okay and see where vai is okay so do not make the mistake to think that because vai is here therefore this here should be vao this here is vro in the outlet triangle vao is here okay very important and then you also have these angles theta o is the tangential outlet angle okay this is the angle between vao and the tangent to the inner circle uh, described by the rotation of the runner vein okay so this angle between vao and that tangent that is what theta o is the tangential outlet angle it is sel uh, seldomly asked okay uh, in in your questions uh, so you must you need to know it but i wouldn't say it's something to worry about they, they they don't ask it often but they may ask it okay but not often and then you have beta o beta o is the outlet runner vein angle okay very good so now we have described all uh, the data in your inlet and outlet triangle okay 
And so at this point, 